Hi everyone, I'm Allison hey. Ramsey and I'm with Peter Craig today and we are the Empire Life Podcast and we talk with entrepreneurs from all around the world and this is our first one where we're actually live together. Yeah, Austin, <laughs> Texas. In Austin, Texas. And we talk with entrepreneurs about all a range of topics and how they have overcome certain challenges and strengths within their company and their business to launch in a huge way and scale online. And Peter Craig, he is a relationship expert and entrepreneur. And today we're going to dive into the feminine and masculine energy and how that can be applied to your entrepreneurship and your company. I'll hand it over to you to intro yourself a little bit more. Yeah, sure. Allison, thanks for having me. And, um, you know, I want to start with saying that I've, I've been a coach. I'm a coach and counselor. I specialize in relationships, authenticity, and intimacy. And a lot of people feel disconnected. Um, they feel disconnected from their own masculine and feminine, which are kind of two different dimensions, and maybe their partner's masculine and feminine. And so I want to start just with kind of a, the, the concept of masculine and feminine is a little bit more of an Eastern kind of philosophy, because mm -hmm. in Western psychology, there's not really a lot of conversation. I went to my whole master's program in counseling, we didn't talk about masculine and feminine once. And I was actually pretty wow. disappointed in that because I think it's a very helpful concept. And in this age of kind of deconstructing masculine and feminine more and more and the power differential kind of patriarchal, unfair dynamic that has been for a long time is, is hopefully in some ways majorly coming apart right now. And so there's this kind of crisis of disconnection that is kind of, so my, I'm here as on a mission to awaken our deep need for human connection with ourselves, with each other, with nature. And so understanding the masculine and feminine dynamic, I think is an important element of, um, there's kind of a toxic myth for men and women. So for men, it's typically invulnerability, you know, sh not showing emotion. It's not safe to show emotions. You, just, you can be angry maybe, but you can't be sad or those are weak or something, which is pretty absurd, but that is actually pretty prevalent. And then with the feminine, it's like you're a beautiful sex object and nothing else. And that's also absurd. And so, um, I'm here to want to empower men to embrace their feminine element because we have one and you know, it's important to embrace our emotional life. Um, and then for women, empowering you to embrace your masculine and feminine in this age of kind of women moving more into the work face, uh, work, uh, element and embodying more masculine qualities that are also women qualities. Um, it's a really beautiful thing. And so how can we do that in a way that, um, let's go of the toxic myths that we have in our culture and really embrace, both elements so that we can actually have that in a partner and be able to give and receive love in a really deep, fulfilling way. Yes, I love that. <laughs> Thank you for that intro. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, and also I was talking with Peter when we first got here about how we're not really talking with that many people as we used to. I like mm -hmm. that you brought that up. Well, yeah. you know, we're in the USA and it, I do feel like in some countries we're still in the tribe more yeah. in the tribe like yeah. in the middle eastern or maybe the more latin cultures they're still having some tribal a aspects and like talking with more people and yeah. communicating on a deeper level and heart communication mm -hmm. with more people a day and you were saying what was it like we're communicating with one to two people uh, a yeah. day and how we feel we're starting to feel so disconnected and lonely and yeah yeah so I, as, as little as 100 years ago research shows mm -hmm. that we had up to 20 people on a daily basis, like say living on a farm together, that you can share your, your emotional life with, like your daily kind of ups and downs. And the research shows that in 1950, it was about two or three, and now it's close to zero to one. And wow. so, you know, part of what I'm just saying with awakening our deep need for human connection is, is kind of admitting like, ah, we actually deserve and want to have more interaction, especially if you're a busy business owner, or entrepreneur, where you're working a lot, it's really important to have friendships for different, you know, your sport friendship or your emotional friendship or different ways that you can kind of relax, yeah, offload how do, some how of that do you stress. Know, how do you, so if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying it's not really healthy to have one person that you're relying on for all those kind of friendships. Yeah, I mean, better to have like, one than none. Um, yeah, but, yeah. And, you know, better often to our have intimate one. partner becomes like everything, That's which thing. can also tax our yeah, your friend, exactly. intimate relationships. Yeah. And so in a way, I'm inviting you to consider to take an extra uh, step or extra responsibility to cultivate friendships, relationships. Yeah, I love that. How, and, how, do you, how will we go about 
question. Yeah. Like what are some, yeah, yeah. Well, or what do you tell your clients? Yeah. Like, so first step one is just kind of acknowledging that's a need. Like actually, yeah, I want to have more friends and that acknowledgement itself, you can set an intention. I'm open to attracting some friendship in my life. And, um, and so with friendship, creating emotional intimacy, um, which that might scare guys, emotional intimacy, that sounds like sex or something, but oh. um, it's not. Um, <laughs> you can even have emotional intimacy with friends. other men. Yeah, exactly. And you um, need your bro your bro. Yeah, we need bromance, right? <laughs> it's, it's, you know, the ability to give and yeah. receive love. It doesn't have to be romantic in any way. It's more of being able to talk about stuff that's below the surface, like not just about the game, about like, oh, hey, yes. I'm actually feeling really stressed out and I have this big decision coming up with a relationship or a family or whatever. And then being able to share because the myth of invulnerability, as Brene Brown says for men, is this kind of like, can't, it's not like manly to have emotion, which I'm here to kind of smash that because that is just, a, it's a toxic myth. It's not real. Um, and it's prevented us from having more meaningful connection. Totally. So, totally. so for men out there, I really invite you to just you know, do, you know, activity based stuff is a great way to meet friends with sports that you like love. Meet or, up, yeah, meetup.com. Okay. Yeah. Um, or like, you know, other entrepreneur meetup or whatever, where you can share relatedness about work stuff, but then be able to go into personal family stuff as you build trust. And so, okay. That's kind of another big topic. Yeah. How yeah. You build so let's, let's in dive into that a little bit. So will you consider that having some bromance and guy time, which is very normal in a lot yeah, of cultures, of I don't feel like it's that normal in our culture. A I mean, lot it's of times, normal. It's just it's, we don't have yeah, as many chances to cultivate friendships and true, build them. True. Like society doesn't necessarily make it easy for us to do That's that. That's true. Like how, how will you hold that container within yourself for, yeah. for really good guy friends? Because I do believe that men need those solid yeah. relationships. Is that considered more of a feminine aspect to to talk more communicate more like get together and just talk because i don't see that happening as much in our culture as i do right. in some other cultures as i lived in turkey for a few years oh, wow, more nice. like in the I middle eastern yeah mm -hmm. me too i love i miss it all the time yeah. but and i've lived in i've traveled to a lot of latin countries and i feel like the men they get together and they just talk and they just talk about everything mm -hmm. and they and then by the time they're done with the conversation they don't necessarily feel the need to go to the counselor they feel like they have talked to a counselor almost right. because they genuinely yeah. hear each other and i witnessed that so many times and how beautiful that is mm -hmm. and how i think men are lacking that right now yeah. within our culture um, yeah. and they're, they're they don't even realize that they have a deep need a deep need for it and it's seen sometimes as feminine right. oh if i talk so much or i over express myself i'm i'm like a woman yeah. but it's not actually true yeah. so like how, how will you address that yeah well yeah. i mean i think it's great to start with activity-based connection for a man or like you know, a sports, like do like sports, sports stuff oh, or yeah. cool. um you know whatever because that that creates the bonding and rapport of the first phases of friendship and then, yeah. then really it's about like having an intention to take the next step, whether that, you know, just like hey, hanging out with a friend one-on-one -on -one or whatever, where you have time to just talk. Because I don't think guys are averse to like talking with their friends and hanging out. It's more of just, it takes extra effort. And if we don't prioritize it, you end up working all this time and then being like, where's my friends? Totally. I'm too busy. And so you have to take responsibility <laughs> for that connection that you desire and deserve. And so that intention really is the first step. And then following through with that is just making it a priority. I'm going to do my best to reach out to the friends that I do have or, you know, take the next step with that and then make yeah. an effort to make new friends. Yeah. And that leads me to in the book you were sharing with me about how, when we talk ourselves through actually learning new ways to trust or as situations come up, we can talk our way through it or have it, would you call that like inner dialogue? that if a new situation arises, when we're in a relationship, we actually learn more and then if we're trying to figure it out and isolating ourselves right. or blocking ourselves off as, as an island, which I have previous experience. <laughs> I've done that quite a few times in my life with, with the childhood that I'm coming from. I tended to feel like I was an island. Oh, it's easier just to make myself an island because I'm not gonna be able to rely on anyone anyways. So I'll just go ahead and do this. I'll be successful like this. 
and I quickly learned that I would be a lot more successful <laughs> with the team and mm. seeking out, well, how can I rely on somebody? How can I be more vulnerable in the situation? How can I let other people know what I need and how they can support me? Maybe I'm not even letting people know how they can support me. And then, of course, right. they're not going to support <laughs> me because I didn't let them know, right? Yeah. And, and you were bringing that up to me that those are all new neural connections that I was building, which I didn't, I was not even aware of. Yeah. Can you go into that? Yeah, more? yeah. So yeah. you're mentioning the word island. So yeah. um, I don't want to overspiel this because it takes a second to wrap your head around. But basically, neuroscience and studies have shown in the past 50 years that typically in our first year, um, the way our primary caregivers take care of us helps us develop a sense of self. And so in that, there's the, the reality that we're learning that we're relational beings. So the kind of myth of like personal development where it's like you kind of duking it out and doing it all on your own, that's kind of dying off culturally to a sense of interdependence where we actually, we're relational social beings, we're animals and we need each other. And so, yeah, you can be successful on your own focusing on yourself, but as an entrepreneur, you're gonna have more traction if you can build a team, if you can create community, if you can feel connected to the people that you work with. So yes. um, John Amen. Bowlby did this research uh, <laughs> on attachment styles. So you can Google that and look it up. But basically, um, children that, when their parents left the room in the study, the parent left and then came back, securely attached children, you can call them anchors, um, kind of trusted their parents were gonna come back because they always kind of did. And so they didn't kind of make too, they cried a little bit when the parent left. And when they came back, they're like, oh, yeah, you're back. And then uh, another set of children, the insecurity attached, there's two kinds of insecurity attachment. One of them is avoidant. So parents maybe just weren't really there for you. And so you kind of had to deal with your emotions on your own. So the first phase is kind of hyper arousal. You could say like, you're really like, oh my gosh, where's my parents? This is really frustrating. I don't know where they are. And then that, and there's so little of parents coming in that you actually end up kind of shutting down and saying, well, I'm not going to even look for them for support. I'm going to do it on my own. So that's the continent called avoidant attachment style where you, you're very self-reliant. So you may be very successful in that way, but maybe you're longing for greater intimacy and connection. And so kind of knowing as your attachment style, you can work with that to kind of take steps at a time to feel more connected. The other insecure attachment style, which again, insecure, it's not like bad, you know, we're all surviving our childhood. And yeah. so we can all yeah. learn to heal through relationship, whether that's intimate or through counseling or with friendship, uh, anxious, ambivalent, they call it. And that is typically when your parents kind of come and then they're not there all the time. So you're, you're like, oh, they're going to come back and then they don't come back sometimes. And that's really frustrating. So you almost pull away and right. then they do come back sometimes and you pull forward. So it's kind of the, the wave is the kind of push pull. And then I, I guess the way that I mentioned was uh, island is the kind of metaphor. So understanding your attachment style, you can kind of understand what your kind of survival instincts have been to get you to where you are to, you know, thrive in the world. Yes. Uh, but then understanding that it can help you know how to talk to your partner and kind of say, okay, well, this is kind of how my pattern is. So help me work with that. And then learn your partners or your team's attachment styles in a way that you can understand when you get to, you know, conflict, you can actually resolve it better understanding how you guys typically have patterned to survive it. Yeah. Yeah. I see a lot of entrepreneurs have been raised in a way where they did need to be very efficient and that they're very successful mm -hmm. and resourceful because maybe they didn't have, like Tony Robbins, for example. Right. I relate to a lot to, to mm -hmm. him and his story, and they didn't really have somebody that they could fully rely on to lead them down the path. And that can be good and bad, like you said. Like somebody telling you, oh, you're so strong. Mm -hmm. you, you got this. You're so right. strong. It, it actually cannot be like a compliment sometimes. Right. Yeah, we're talking about that. Yeah, that's me realizing – oh maybe they see me as an island i'm being too strong i need to i don't have to be so strong and i have to have it all figured out mm -hmm. i can rely or lean on other people yeah. they're just as strong or they're an expert in a certain field and how how do you say ways that you can kind of reflect and and utilize that for your own personal growth yeah, yeah. um well you know, science is showing, and it's kind of obvious in a way, we're all relational beings. And we actually grow through being able to see ourselves in how others see us. Oh, and that yeah. kind of uh, interplay of connection. And so the more friendships, the more types of relationships you can have, the more the spectrum of sense of self you can have that can make you feel fulfilled and alive. You know, because all of you entrepreneurs out there, you're an entrepreneur, but you're also 
you're, you know, a son, you're a father, you're a friend, you're, you have all these other kinds of relationships. And so kind of going back to the masculine feminine thing, um, it's really important to honor the masculine and feminine. And in a way, our toxic masculinity is like guys competing against each other. I learned that from Terry Real, who's a really famous couples counselor. I've seen that a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so typically, so guys are like competing against each other in this like kind of toxic way. And then they kind of impose that on women. And then women tend to feel like objectified by men or um, – it's, it's like, how do we feel supported? So in a way, totally. it's like honoring the feminine qualities of, so. Something came up for me oh, yeah, related, please. yeah, related to that topic yesterday. When, and in my relationship, we were having a conversation about how it's not easy for me to sometimes walk into a situation and make a laser-like decision. Mm-hmm. I, a lot of times, and maybe this is coming from more femininity, right. I first think about or analyze feel from my heart all the different options all what those outcomes might be yeah how is everybody going to feel with all of those outcomes how am i going to feel how are they going to feel and then so i've learned that i i'll ask people hey can i have a little time to think about that Mm -hmm. can i have a little time to see how i feel yeah to be fair and just to everybody in the situation Whereas in the business world, the entrepreneurship mm-hmm. world, sometimes that's that's yeah. definitely not looked upon as we got to make this decision right. like right now. Right. And whereas women that are women or men that tend yeah. to come from a more feminine energy, right. I don't respond well to that. If someone continues to pressure me and say, I have to have a decision like right now, mm-hmm. I'll say I'll continue to repeat myself mm-hmm. because I've learned that I won't feel good doesn't feel authentic and good right. for me to just say okay like this yeah. and then later I may regret because then later I'm like wow I probably decision. could have done I could have done this and this mm-hmm. or oh my gosh I thought about a better even better option yeah. that's gonna make everybody more happy that's more fair and then it's too late because I've already made that decision yeah so that was that was a huge thing that came up in a conversation last night Whereas I was saying, or I was feeling, that seems very masculine, right. which I totally respect. Yeah. This masculine energy, but when when um, the more feminine energy is coming into the business place, it can be challenging if somebody might have, like you were saying, the toxic masculinity, right. and they may have the same expectations on you that, well, that's how business is ran. Right. You come in, you make this decision, and you don't question. You're just like, fuck everybody. Mm-hmm. I made the decision. Right. It's over. It's done. Moving on. Right. If I didn't take the time to make that decision, I can't stop thinking about it. Mm-hmm. So I, I've learned with myself, I'll just ask, hey, I need a little time. Can I get back with you on that tomorrow? Like, how? How will you address this? Or would you yeah. consider that more of the toxic masculinity to make a decision without caring the, the outcome, you know? When you put it like that, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. so just to, like a quick archetypal exploration. So from the oneness in the Eastern tradition comes two. And so there's light and dark, masculine, feminine, day, night, etc. And so the masculine is typically associated with like penetrative uh force you know the lingam whatever and then the feminine is the all embracing force the receiving so it's like this natural giving and receiving energy and so you know firstly just honor and accept whatever we all have our kind of a different balance of those energies inside of us so kind of just acceptance of what what that is for you is the first step and a lot of guys are less in touch with that acceptance than women but Mm -hmm. it's just a you know culturally we have a very like hyper masculine corporate culture where it you know and there's a lot of i I would love to make the this like split second decisions Mm -hmm. and know what the outcome is going to be and have it all work out Mm -hmm. so it's it just doesn't feel good to me yeah so you know the the masculine qualities of like you know laser like focus of like okay make a decision bam that can be helpful but the toxic version of it is not collaborating not having like what is the group cohesion what is the group energy and so it's really finding that balance and you know, I think we're in a slightly you know, patriarchal society where we need to let more of the feminine energy into the corporate environment where it's more collaborative and, you know, because we can have competent, competitive and collaborative in a non-toxic way. That is the ideal, I think. Totally. And so, and like nobody, ha- nobody has to be right. 
I guess I keep I keep coming back to that. It's like the consultants right, the entrepreneurs right, the clients right, everybody's right. <laughs> We're all right. And when we let when we let maybe that's toxic masculinity or ego, right. when we let the ego like I have to be right, I'm gonna continue to fight for this. Right. And I learned something recently as like if you made a fault, if you feel like you did anything uh, wrong or you have any kind of fault in the situation just to admit that yeah and if you were in integrity you're you're doing your business with an integrity then you admit anything maybe that could be that can be a fault and then come to a peaceful come to a peaceful yeah. understanding without saying pointing fingers or he said she said she said she said or any yeah. anybody they said we said right it's it's nobody against against one another right. we're all here to collaborate yeah. you know and that's my opinion yeah that's how, absolutely. how we run and I, I i also feel like our clients are like family mm. so nice. <laughs> and our team is like family so like you were saying going back to if we if we are running a team and we have a team we want to figure out how they communicate because yeah. it might be different yeah. are they feeling heard are they feeling listened to mm. because myself personally i tend to walk into a situation and I'm going to be hurt. That's my personality. Yeah. And people are going to listen. But other people may be always letting other people be heard. And as part of being a strong leader, an entrepreneur, you need to make sure that they are being heard too. <laughs> like they might always be listening to you and yeah. your ideas if you, if you have a very strong personality. Yeah. And are they being heard? Is everybody being heard? That's yeah. For me, that was part of my personal growth and being a stronger leader, a better leader. Yeah. And I, what what will you say to that? Um, in the masculine, like, if, do you have anything to share uh, before we hop off? I guess with related to masculine femininity yeah. and some tips on how we can utilize those better within. Uh, yeah. 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 So I think kind of the paradox is well, the masculine might say, well, just keep just keep doing the laser, bam, 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 decision, decision, decision. Right. You're more productive. However, exactly. the way the nervous system works <laughs> and the way life works is that it's focus, relax, focus, relax. Mm. So it's kind of like on, off, on, off, masculine, feminine. And, and so typically leaders actually find they're more productive when they have periods of extreme relaxation and rest in periods. And so converting that to the business environment, it's like you have a lot of focus and decision making, but then you have collaboration and balancing those elements of um, hyper focus and decision making and then collaboration and, and brainstorming. It's so obviously depends on the context here for how to be more effective, but typically people in, in a work environment need to feel heard and need to feel like they're making progress in order to feel satisfied at work. And so it's important as a leader to check in with your team that, Hey, how, you know, it, acknowledging, honoring, and even celebrating small steps of productivity because oh, that'll make that. people feel that's like a they're a part idea. of the team and that's oh, even you can yeah. you know do goal checkups so it can be masculine in a way as well as honoring the feminine of making sure people feel included and we do like that voice matters. in our company yeah i love that like milestones and mm -hmm. celebrating yeah all of them yeah yeah because if you're just all go 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 and you know exactly. I, I all my clients pretty much are this <laughs> they're very high functioning high performing but then they're really stressed and not in touch with their emotional life so can maybe end on kind of a moment of mindfulness of like really yes. Um, taking the time to slow down and if you're really busy that's great well you can't work all day long I mean I guess you can but you got to sleep so you want to have good sleep and so mindfulness is really uh, not moment by moment non-judgmental awareness so kind of just accepting if you feel crappy or whatever you feel instead of it not being right or just letting it be I like that uh, and yeah. then just being able to turn your attention inward you can do a body scan from head to toe from toe to head or just take five minutes or even one minute to do some breathing and just you know, put your hand on your heart or your stomach and just feel your body because that's actually going to let the information that your senses are sending to you actually become conscious because we actually have more information from our senses to our brain than vice versa. They're called afferent nerves, 70% are oh. afferent nerves. And so cool. it's actually, if you want to be a leader, you need to know what you're feeling in your body. That'll increase your gut, your instinct, as well as your intuition of your heart or whatever you want to call that. And so leadership is about mindfulness of being able to notice what you're feeling. Yes. And then the next level of that is being able to notice what your person across from you, whether that's your client or your teammate is feeling and then noticing what's going on between you. And those are advanced skills and emotional intelligence, which women are typically more effective at. The feminine typically has more qualities of that, but it's for everybody. 
Yeah, and, and men need to have that too to be able to hold the container for somebody in a relationship. Exactly. Right, and I, I, I'm hearing from you that you're saying to be a strong leader, our quality of being a yeah. strong leader is to be able, first you have to be in touch with yourself mm -hmm. and then you can hold a container yeah. because without having the mindfulness of being in touch with right. what's going on with you, you're not capable to support anybody in mm -hmm. their journey and yeah. their mindfulness, right? Yeah, exactly. yeah I love that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. And, and you work a lot online too. If they want to work with you online. Yeah. Peter Craig coaching.com and Peter Craig counseling.com. Yeah. Talk to you guys soon. All right. Thanks so much.